And Congressman Waller is with me now. Good to see you. You as well. So, Congressman, let's get into this. The mayor of New York City says there's just no more room. He wanted, though, to send buses to part of your district, right? But you and other elected leaders fought hard against that. So let me start first with the, with the why. Oh, look, I, I've said from the very beginning, uh, this is not about being against immigrants or immigration. Uh, my wife is an immigrant. I've been through this process. Uh, it's a broken process and a broken system. The challenge that we're dealing with is that you're having tens of thousands of migrants cross the border uh, every day. Uh, some cases they are seeking asylum uh, legally. Other cases they're just crossing the border. Um, and unfortunately, there is such a backlog in the asylum process. It's taking at minimum two to three years. Uh, and in some cases, we're seeing people uh, have wait times of over a decade right. uh, to have their asylum cases heard. In the interim, uh, because of the, the lax policies at the border by the Biden administration, uh, you, you have New York City taking in over 60,000 migrants mm -hmm. in just the last year. And obviously, I agree with the mayor. It's unsustainable. They cannot sustain it in New York City. The challenge here is twofold. Number one, New York City has a, a sanctuary city policy uh, that was enacted in 2016. Right. And they have not wavered in. And so what you have is southern state governors deciding, fine, you want to be a sanctuary city? You don't want to work with us to, to secure the border? We're going to send them up to New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, and the city has been overwhelmed. And now what the city is doing, because it cannot take in all these migrants, is trying to shift responsibility uh, to municipalities outside the city. And that is a real challenge because we don't have anywhere near the infrastructure, the social service department and agencies, or nonprofit organizations uh, to deal with hundreds, if not thousands, of migrants coming in at a given okay, time. Okay, so let me ask that, you this then. Let me ask that's you this. really where the fight is. Right, because you're talking about hundreds or thousands. But do you ever, there, and you've admitted, like you just said, it's a tough task for the city to handle alone. So do you see a future? If there is proper coordination with the city and the mayor, where you would allow some of those asylum seekers into maybe a few spaces up north in your district? Well, it's not a function of me allowing or not allowing. It's a function of these municipalities uh, have self-control and self-governance. And so far, the mayor and the governor have failed to coordinate and cooperate with them. Uh, it is not a function of just picking up the phone an hour before the, the migrants are due to say, hey, we're dropping them off in your district. Right. That's why I'm no, saying if there is proper actually... coordination, if there's proper coordination right. and there is proper communication. But, 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 here's, but, but Dan, here's the problem. There hasn't been. And, and so you have seen significant pushback from municipalities because, uh, number one, they're just going directly to these hotels. They're bypassing the municipal elected officials and trying to contract directly. Some of these hotels are in complete violation uh, of uh, the town codes. Uh, they are in violation of the county health uh, department. And so th this is a real challenge. New York City does not have the authority to set up shelters in other jurisdictions. Uh, and so rather than work with uh, other municipalities who have taken in migrants, this is not a function of nobody else taking in migrants. Rockland County, uh, East Round Post Central mm -hmm. School District, took in over 1,000 migrant students uh, in September. So we have taken in migrants. We have migrants that come here, and a lot of them uh, have family here or friends here. And so it's easier for them uh, to, to have support and accommodation in terms of housing. Uh, but we don't have the capabilities of New York City. And this, this has been the, the struggle and the... For even even the a few dozen, maybe. maybe. Again, it's, it's a function of how it's done. And, and we're already taking in migrants. It's okay. not that we aren't. But, the, but if, you, if you were to offload hundreds, if not thousands, and, and the mayor and his team were very clear, this is a pilot program. This is the beginning, not the end. Uh, and so, you know, you start taking in hundreds at a clip uh, into smaller communities, it's going to be a challenge. Most of these people do not have asylum uh, granted. They cannot work. They don't have work authorization. So what are they going to be doing during the day? 
And that has been uh, uh, the, the mayor and his team cannot give an answer on any of this. And right. that's been a big frustration. I've spoken with the mayor several times. Uh, I've spoken with the governor. Yeah. Uh, and there's really no clear direction. That's yeah. the problem. Here. I do want to move on to other topics. They are working, I think, across the board now to get people work visas quicker, make that process more speedy to get folks the opportunity to work. But we'll talk more about that at a different time because I want to talk about other topics with you while we have you. You've been calling on George Santos to resign basically since we first le learned about all the allegations of lying and fraud. Now, there was this vote to expel Santos last week, but you, along with other others in the Republican Party, referred to a resolution to expel to the House Ethics Committee. So explain the, the vote here. Why not just do it all in one swoop? Was it kicking the can down the road? No, well, there weren't the votes uh, necessary. You need two thirds to expel somebody from Congress. Uh, and no one has ever been expelled uh, without a criminal conviction or a referral by the Ethics Committee. The Democrats tried to circumvent the process here uh, in a purely political move. What we're trying to do, my colleagues from New York and I, uh, we want him out. He needs to he needs to go. There's no question about that. Uh, and the sooner he goes, the better. But you 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 can't just circumvent the process because we want him out. And so, uh, so we you couldn't just vote. Let me just understand this. Sorry to interrupt you. No. You couldn't just vote no because you were worried about what the rest of the party was doing and not you as an individual. Well, the the motion was on the referral to ethics. That was that was the vote. Uh, and so I could I could have voted no, and then what? I mean, it, it, it was it's going to ethics so that we can get a referral to expel him. Gotcha. Uh, this was a procedural uh, motion uh, based on a purely political resolution that the Democrats put forward. We all want him out. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, Nicole Maliotakis yeah. is on the record. Anthony D'Esposito is on the record. Nick Lalota is on the record. Mark Molinaro. I'm on the record. We all want him out. But you, you're not going to be able to just boot somebody out without two-thirds of the vote. I understand. So in order to get two-thirds of the vote, you need to have a process. Okay. And the process is either a criminal conviction, uh, George Santos pleads guilty, uh, and then we remove him, or you get an ethics referral. We have asked the ethics committee to expedite the process and, and give us a referral so that we can act and remove him. Understood. Hey, Congressman, I'm out of time. I do want to get you briefly on the record, 15 seconds here. Congestion pricing, if it moves forward, is there an option for any folks in your district? It is the biggest scam going. It is nothing more than a money grab from suburban and outer borough commuters to pay for the MTA's bloated and mismanaged operations. It needs to be stopped at all costs. Uh, my commuters do not have a one-seat ride in Rockland County. We have a $50 million value gap. We pay more taxes to the MTA than services we receive. It's terrible, and it needs to be killed. I know it. Bipartisan between you and Democrats in New Jersey. All right, Congressman Lawler, good to see you. Thank you for addressing all three Thank of the big you. topics this week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.